I first heard about Brahma Island when we had filmed another bass show on Lake Kissimmee. The guy I was with, we were actually fishing around that area and he was talking about, you know, water buffalo or bison. You know, you may have the opportunity to see them standing in, on, in, alongside the island. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? When I had the opportunity to start doing some research, I was amazed about the history of Brahma Island, the history of the Lightsey family that owned Brahma Island, and everything that's kind of gone into this place. It's pretty interesting. Largest privately owned freshwater inland island, over 3,000 acres. Owned by the Lightsey family, which is a ranching family, which is multiple generations in Florida, have been here for a very long time. Um, they purchased Brahma Island, I think it was back in the 1700s, 1800s for, for, um, for cattle farming. So interesting enough, it's been in their family for that amount of time. The cattle business is, has been in the Lightsey family, I think, for five or six generations now. And, you know, a lot of this land was, has been in their family for over 100 years. They want to see this land remain, you know, in its natural state and not a asphalt parking lot with strip malls and that sort of stuff. So, you know, they've committed the majority of their land to conservation easements to ensure that you know, someone or folks will be able to enjoy seeing, you know, the old natural Florida. Uh, in the you know, last 20, 30 years or so, they've turned it into a game ranch. Uh, so a protected game ranch, privately owned, um, dozens of different types of, of game and wildlife out there. So uh, arriving at Brahma Island is a lot like pulling up to the gates of Jurassic Park. And it's pretty neat. We, we pull up, we pull up on the shore, we tie the boat to a, a, a post, hope the boat's gonna be there in the morning, and then there's a truck just sitting there. Load all our gear in the back of this truck, this flatbed Ford pickup truck, and just start making our way towards the lodge. And immediately, immediately you're seeing game, and exotic game, stuff that I've never seen, axis deer, and black deer, all, all these different, things that Philip's sitting here describing to me, telling me what they are. I mean, we get out and there's zebras out in the pasture. You're like, what in the, where, where am I right now? This is definitely not Florida. You know, so when I was talking to George about some ideas for the show or whatever, and I mentioned Brahma Island, and you know, I said, look, we can do some bass fishing. And Philip grew up in this Lake Wales area, and you know, spent a lot of time on Lake Kissimmee, and pretty picturesque around Brahma Island. You got to imagine this several thousand acre inland island surrounded by Lake Kissimmee. You know, it's just a it's a perfect paradise for, for, for bass to be around. There's so much structure around that area. So taking off out of there, leaving the, you know, the small cut of, of Brahma Island, we were just a couple hundred yards and we started seeing activity and decided, you know, this, this looks like just as good a spot as any. Let's start fishing here. Let's work these, these grass beds and, and let's just search for fish. You know, so often with, with any type of fishing, it's just a matter of getting out there, trying to get a pattern established, trying to figure out where the fish are and go from there. You know, I would say, you know, I got started fishing around here. You know, I would, afternoons, I'd go down and, and throw a worm, try to catch a bass or two, you know, before I had to come in for dinner. The Kissimmee Chain is, you know, one of the premier bass fishing lakes or chain of lakes in Florida. Uh, I mean, there's always, you know, typically any weekend, there's gonna be some sort of a bass tournament and even some pro events, you know, that they fish on this lake or on the chain. Got him? Nice. God, 
they've been tearing up those, tearing up those weeds in there. Drop that worm in there, man. That one didn't take long at all. Little guy, fun nonetheless. He's just a baby, though. I think when most people think of Florida, they think of you know theme parks and Disney World, you know. And in all actuality, there's all of Florida is a theme park, you know. Whether it's you know out here on Brahma Island, or you know going down some of the the creeks or rivers that that flow through Florida, you know, or the natural springs we have. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of folks never get to, to appreciate that sort of stuff. Philip, coming from inland, has a true passion for offshore fishing. So a majority of his fishing is, you know, blue water. He does a lot of trips to the Bahamas. So um, it's funny. We, we're putting this trip together, and we're talking about doing Brahma Island and, and freshwater fishing, and we're both looking at each other like, all right, well, you know, we can kind of figure this out. We're going to catch some bass, have a good time at it. But really, the essence of this trip was to get out into Brahma Island um, and kind of experience that old Florida. It, it feels like you're on safari. It feels like you're on an African safari in the back of a pickup truck getting, you know, driving through the plains and just witnessing wild game run back and forth in front of me. God, this thing is so cool. They say, what, 450 years old? Supposed to be the oldest live oak documented. Jeez, imagine if this tree could tell some stories. Indians. Be inc oh. Incredible. A lot of people never get to see this in their life. No, this is a treat for sure. Incredible day. Go back to the lodge, cook it some ribeye steaks on the grill. Okay, better than this. No better than this. Good old, old Florida right here. I mean, this is it. This is the, this is the pinnacle of what you, you think when you, old Florida. This was before it was Disneyland and Universal and. It probably all looked like this. Yeah. Oak tamic trees with moss hanging off of them. Palmetto, you know, bushes below and wild game running around everywhere. They have a lodge out there for you to stay in diesel generators, solar power, you know, all the amenities that you can have in, in the nicest of places, but out there isolated on this, this one island. You know, when I was growing up, we, we went to the same church as the Lightsies, and you know, whether, it, you know, I killed my first turkey with Cliff, or we were hog hunting, or, you know, just riding around looking for alligators. Um, you know, I was fortunate to, to experience the, the land and the conservation that the Lightsies have uh, here in Central Florida. So this is our main ranch? A bunch of different property? Yeah, yeah this, is, this is the main ranch that we're going to, you know, they've been in been in Florida and in the U.S. I want to say since the early 1800s. It's amazing. And I'm sure this property is just untouched like it was a long time ago. You know, it seems like this is all old Florida throughout here, like, like that Brahma Island, you know? It's yeah, I mean, I would say probably 90% of their property is under conservation easement. 
so it'll never be developed. The land is put into a conservation easement, and what that means is it's sold back to the state with the promise of never being developed. The Lightsies can still use that, they can still raise their cattle on it, they can still graze on it, they can still make their living on it, but this is not going to be developed land. And that's, that's something that is unique and that's something that is a great thing for Florida. These large parcels, these large inland parcels will never turn into, you know, housing developments because of people like the Lightsies. Uh, now when we get to the cow pens, just be aware of your surroundings and, you know, obviously, you know, no shouting, no hollering, whatever. The calmer you are, typically the calmer the cows are. It's always fun to go back and work in the, in the cow pens, you know, especially when you don't do it on an everyday basis and put George on a horse and get him in, involved in the action. And, you know, the nice thing about working cows, especially with the Lightsies, is, you know, if you mess up, you probably got another couple thousand or a couple hundred to, to try again on, you know? I ridden a horse maybe once when I was a kid. Maybe once. That I can remember. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience in a horse. So what's the plan? What We got them saddled up. What's what's the, what are we doing? Yeah, so earlier this morning, all the guys went and got all the calves out of a bigger pasture into a smaller like lane type. So now since we have the horses ready, we'll go out and round them up towards the pens. And so once they're in the pens, we can get them all together, count them, weigh them, tag them, and then send them off into the trailers. What's this one's name? Frog. Frog. Will they respond to frog? Like if I lose Probably. them? Probably. Probably. Say frog, come here. Frog. Listen, it's you and me today, buddy. Don't make me look bad. This is national television. You know why his name's Frog? He likes to jump. Oh, frog. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> What'd she say? Frog because he likes to jump. I'm just kidding. <laughs> From the first encounter with the light sees all of them, you just get the feeling, you just know that they're all hardworking, salt of the earth, just good people. So right now they're just gonna sort them, weigh them? Right, so. Only so many pounds per truck? Right, so they'll put like 48, 49,000 on a truck. And uh, so they're gonna bring them through here, weigh them on this. Yep. And once they hit 48,000 pounds, bring the right. truck up, push them onto a truck. Right, so yeah. we'll put like 100 head on a truck. Okay. Yeah, I got to be a cowboy for a day. I mean, I don't know if I, they probably thought I was a giant kook, but uh, they, were, they were warm, they were welcoming. They, ex I was there on probably one of the busiest days of the year too. It was just good timing, bad timing, call it what you want. They were moving 1,400 heads of cattle in one day. And it was interesting talking to them, even hearing about this, that they take this cattle and move it to Texas and Georgia because it's cheaper for them to ship the cattle there to where the feed is than to bring the feed to the cattle. So, interesting enough, all 1,400 heads gets on trucks in this one day process of loading, sorting, then they go off to these different states to finish growing. You know, I think, I think George did really well. Now, I think he was uh, helped out a lot by the horse. Yeah, the horse had probably done this four or five or years better of, of working cows than the rest of it. So I don't know if George was leading the horse or the horse was leading George. You know, he did a good job for his first time ever getting on a horse and, and uh, definitely helped, uh, helped him move the cows through the cattle pens. In the marine industry, you don't always hear the phrase made in America, but that's not the case with blackfin rods. They make these right down the street from my house. And there's a level of pride that goes into that, knowing that I'm partnered with this company and that I know the people that are laying their hands on this, building this rod from start to finish. Blackfin rolls their own blanks and not a lot of rod companies can say that. They use the highest quality products and they have people that have been doing this for years. They have a level of experience that's unmatched in the industry. You can come right down here to Hope Sound, walk in the doors of Blackfin, and watch this rod being created from start to finish. And that's truly unique. Blackfin is so confident in their product, they offer a lifetime warranty. With that kind of assurance, you know that it's a great product. 
Blackfin has inshore and offshore series. Everything to suit your needs. So make sure you check out your local retailer and look for Blackfin rods. This is summertime in Florida. And not only Florida, we're talking about inland Florida. No sea breeze. Just the middle of the state, about as hot as it gets. So this is not the prime time to be targeting bass, by no means. It's so warm, the fish, you know, are just tough to get them to bite. So we didn't time this perfectly. But you know what, we're gonna make the best of it. There he is. That's a good one. Power pull me down. Love me some bass fishing. Like when I'm a kid. Put a belly on that one, fella. That one's been eating well. Oh yeah, he's spitting stuff up. Look at that, he just spit up the, look at the bait he just spit up. Yeah, look at that, sure enough. We saw him in there feeding. Oh, a couple pounder, belly. So much fun, we're sitting right out here outside the, outside the entrance of Brahma. Got up first thing this morning, hopped in the, he came as he came right out here. Look at this. Nothing to it. Catching bass. So we didn't time this perfectly, but you know what? We're gonna make the best of it. We're, we're getting out there, try to catch some fish and caught some fish. But we decided, you know what? Let's switch gears. Let's make this a little easier on ourselves. At least we thought we were gonna make it easier on ourselves. And let's get some live shiners. So getting shiners is a production in itself. You gotta get back in the truck. You gotta find a tackle store that has them in stock. You gotta drive to the tackle store. And it was an hour or two process just to get these shiners back to the boat to start live bait fishing for these bass. Um, water's so hot, bait doesn't even do well. Bait doesn't even wanna live. So you get a couple casts out of these things and they're dead. When you can get a popping cork, throw a live bait on, pitch it uh, around the lily pads and just wait for that strike. When that bobber goes down, it's like being a kid again. It's so much fun. It reminds me of, of you know, what I used to do as a kid, riding a bike around with a fishing rod in my hand going from lake to lake. Mm, there he is. Got one on the shiner. <laughs> Pop that thing right out of the weeds. Bad one. Oh yeah. How cool is that? Pretty easy to come out here and shine or fish. In the middle of the day, they don't tend to chew so well on artificials. Got some good bites this morning, but in the afternoon, switch over to shiner bite. Right up in the weeds. He just inhaled that. Chased after it for a little bit, but got it. Look at the belly on these things. Yeah, they've been eating well. Yeah. A couple pounder. Fun. We caught bass. Our goal was to go out, have a good time, try to catch some bass, and have fun with it. You know, I, I think it's tough to, to ever get tired of something like this. You know, you hear the, the crickets in the background, and you get to see deer in your backyard, or just the, the peace and quiet, you know what I mean? Being able to walk out, you know, in your front yard or backyard and look up and see all the stars and not have the, you know, the light pollution from the cities and the rest of it. You know, everybody should have the opportunity to experience something, you know, whether it's Brahma Island or somewhere that's, for the most part, are untouched by man and, and get to see what some of the other aspects that Florida has to offer when it comes to outdoor recreation. It's more about the experience. It's, that's what it's about. It's not about gripping a, a fish by the lip and holding it up and taking a picture and beating your chest. It's about going out there with friends, sharing the experience, sharing the excitement, taking it all in, the, the, the preparation before and the, the camaraderie afterwards and sitting around the, the barbecue and telling stories and, and sharing adult beverage. That, to me, is what these trips all are about. That, to me, that's what Unfathom is about.
Grigor, you and these rocks. Easy, easy. You know, um, you know, um, you know, it's just weird, like. When I woke up early in the driving rain, I found John's out hitting on the liquid game. I don't even know how to steer one of these things. Talking to the corner of the table, all, talking to himself again. When mom came in morning when he tried to make me pay the rent, said I ain't got no money for you, can I pay my way with these dancing shoes? I, I was kidding.